So I've been meaning to make this video for a while, um, but I kind of got caught up in, in making new content for you guys, so I never made it. But I'm just going to tell you a quick story, what happened to me right after the trucker convoy. A lot of people found my channel during the Trucker Convoy. I was doing interviews and live streams, and thank you for subscribing and, and sticking around. Um, I kind of fell off the map a little bit after the Trucker Convoy, and I've never really given you guys an explanation as to why. I've kind of spoken to it on podcasts here and there, but I'm not sure if I've ever actually explained it here on the channel, so here goes. Despite how the Trucker Convoy ended, I was still feeling very energized. Uh, I felt like we had caught... The federal government looking very authoritarian, kind of proving a lot of people's suspicions about the true character of this federal government. And I continued to do some live stream interviews at uh, the protests here in Toronto. But then the arrests started. Of course, we saw Tamara Litch, Chris Barber, Danny Bulford, who were positioned as, you know, somewhat official former uh, leaders of the convoy in Ottawa. But then we started to see arrests toward Pat King. Freedom George, Randy Hillier, which didn't make sense because although these people are seen as leaders in the movement, they're they're in no formal capacity uh, like an official leader of the convoy. So so why are they getting arrested? Why are they getting picked up? And then soon after that, Morgan May and Jeremy McKenzie got arrested for attending a protest in Nova Scotia, and they were thrown in solitary confinement for three days. So this was separate from the convoy. This was these two individuals, two prominent popular dissidents getting thrown in jail for, of course, mischief. There were lots of other people at this protest that they attended. The RCMP knew about the protest that was happening. It was everything was safe. Everything was fine. But after the fact, the two most popular people at that protest got nabbed and thrown into solitary confinement for three days. And for anyone watching who doesn't understand this, you might say, oh, well, they got out and it was fine and they got out and it was fine. You have to go through a lot when you get arrested and have to hire a lawyer and have to do all the paperwork. It's it's emotionally, financially, spiritually draining. It is very much an attack on that individual, on that person. It is a major, inc major, major inconvenience to that person. Sorry, I'm just editing here and I missed a major, major point, which is although these people are free, they're on bail conditions. They have certain bail conditions where they can't talk about certain things. They can't go certain places or they can't speak to certain people. Their rights in this country are now limited in various capacities through court order. So this is another thing that terrified me. I don't want my rights especially to speak, to be restricted for getting nabbed at a protest for mischief. But then what really messed with me is when Randy Hillier got arrested, a sitting politician, by the way, and then on his bail conditions, I was listed as one of the names, as one of the individuals that he's not allowed to talk to. Don't talk to this person. I better message Chelsea Hillier to see if I'm allowed to say that. Am I allowed to talk about your dad's bail conditions publicly. Yeah, I'm just editing this and I'm watching myself paranoid. Can I even talk about this? Hey, Chelsea, can I even talk about this? Am I allowed to talk about what's happening in this country? I'm gonna talk about paranoia later, but you can see it right here as I'm paranoid if I'm even allowed to talk about things that have happened. And on that note, Chelsea Hillier is not even allowed to talk about what she's gone through, about what's, what's happening with her. She's on house arrest right now. So being on this list of a person that Hillier is not allowed to talk to, that confirmed for me that I'm obviously on some list. And being put on this list coincided at the exact same time that Jeremy McKenzie and his girlfriend Morgan May were, quite frankly, arbitrarily thrown in jail for attending a protest. This, unfortunately, gave so much oxygen to the paranoia voice in my head. It made the paranoia voice in my head say, they're coming after you, Greg. You know, who's to say you won't get nabbed when you're at the next protest in Toronto, for example. And I was trying to reach out to people at the time to be reassured that that I was crazy, but a lot of the people I was talking to did not get it. They, they said, oh, well, you know, they can't do that. They can't uh, arrest Morgan May and, and Jeremy McKenzie for doing that. Well, they did. Oh, no, there's got to be some laws against that. Well, well, they did. It's almost like the laws didn't apply to these people. And it's almost like they were persecuted because of their political beliefs and because of their popularity. It's almost like in this country, the laws don't matter, depending on who you are. 
And I'm looking at what Randy Hillier got charged for, mischief, counseling to commit mischief, and some other thing to do with mischief, which is if you attended the protest in Ottawa, if you encouraged people to come down to the to the protest in Ottawa, and if you hung around until the very end, the last few days in Ottawa, apparently, apparently, you're supposed to be guilty of all those three things. That was me. And trust me, as much as I want to continue fighting for freedom, I don't have the money to get into a legal battle right now. I don't have the funds or, quite frankly, the patience or the willingness to get into some long, drawn-out legal nonsense for simply interviewing people at a protest and, and documenting what the hell was happening in Ottawa for those three weeks. So to put it another way, I was intimidated being put on this list seeing my friends being thrown in jail for completely ridiculous reasons. The state successfully intimidated me and scared me. I, I hate to admit it, but it worked. Their tactic totally worked on me. It, it, it totally got me paranoid. I stopped showing up to uh, protests in Toronto on the weekends because I didn't want the possibility of I've been, you know, nabbed and taken away. And it's not that I was so egotistical, like, oh, they're definitely gonna come after me. It's more that if it would have happened, I wouldn't have been surprised, you know? I wouldn't have been like, oh, like how could have this happened? If I'm an authoritarian psycho, I'm probably gonna wanna try to get this other person who has a YouTube channel that's sharing heartwarming videos of what actually happened at the protest, right? So yeah, for the next little while, I was a little bit uh, cautious to, you know, go to protests. Uh, I was, to borrow a phrase from Rachel Gilmore, I was, I was afraid to leave my home, uh, not because of, hateful comments on the internet, which I get on a regular basis, but because I was afraid my own government might have decided that I, I'm someone who's worth arresting and uh, persecuting, attacking litigiously. This is someone we're going to drag into the courts to drain their bank account and drain their spirits. I was afraid of that happening. And keep in mind, this was right after the convoy, so there was a lot of weird things still going on with frozen bank accounts. And like I said, Jeremy McKenzie and Morgan May being arrested. To me, that was the kind of most egregious arrest of them all in terms of just being completely unjustified and also a clear targeting of two individuals who have like a popular platform and are popular dissidents. But during that time, I was kind of looking at my options and wondering what to do next. What could I do? And at the same time, it was a new low. It was a very low and new low for what I thought about this country, what I thought about the country that that I grew up in, the country that I love, the country that I call home. And it's, uh, I thought about leaving. I thought about leaving Canada. Um, I don't wanna leave. I never wanted to leave. But I thought to myself, Am I able to still tell the truth? Am I able to still talk about what I want to talk about here? Am I able to speak freely here in Canada anymore without being persecuted? Because I'm noticing a pattern with uh, who's getting arrested uh, arbitrarily, and it's people who are successfully speaking out against the government, and they're doing it in a compelling, persuasive way to the point where they're gaining an audience. And I do want to shout out to raging dissident Jeremy McKenzie, because during this time, despite you know being thrown in jail initially and getting back out with Morgan May, being in solitary confinement for three days, this guy kept streaming. You know, Jeremy kept streaming. He kept showing up. And he was the only person there to this day still. He's the only person that I think really makes sense in this country when it comes to talking about what actually, what's actually going on. He, he's the only person that has the appropriate amount of urgency uh, in his message and in what he's talking about. I still feel like we're already past the pale in this country. You know, we saw the authoritarian face of our government at the trucker convoy. And then we saw during the Emergencies Act inquiry, okay, we're just going to make a complete mockery of the justice system and this whole swearing an oath to tell the truth. Like that's just a joke now in this country. They, they made a mockery out of that. And really, where is the opposition to this? You know, I, I'm really, really disappointed in Pierre Polyev. Does he talk about at all about these bank accounts being frozen? Does he talk at all about these political prisoners? He wants Canada to be the most free ever, but he's not talking about the authoritarian problem. He's not talking about this targeted harassment, targeted litigation against people who are actually standing up for our rights and freedoms. Because that's a good thing to remember, right? Who was standing up for our rights and freedoms for two years? It wasn't Pierre Polyev. He wasn't saying 
much, if anything at all, about mandates. And then the people that did, the people that stuck their neck, their neck out, Max Bernier, Randy Hillier, they've been thrown in jail. And and Pierre doesn't want to talk about that. That obviously didn't help the way I felt uh, for the for the few months that I kind of fell silent for a while. Because like I said, I it, it was a, it was a new low for me. I've just I've just not. <laughs> It was just a feeling of like, this country really fucking sucks. So anyways, guys, that's kind of the story of why I kind of completely fell off the face of the earth for a few months after the trucker convoy. Uh, I do apologize, um, but I'm also, I think, I think I needed to do that because I was really kind of coming to terms, terms with uh, what this country has become. And uh, I kind of had to build up the strength to uh, turn the camera on again because, well, quite frankly, I didn't want to believe it. I didn't want to believe what was going on in this country. Not only what had happened, but also just the lack of attention on it, the lack of people talking or caring about it. And like I said, the intimidation got to me because because I, I wanted to talk about what was going on and just like shout from the rooftops of how ridiculous and wrong everything that was happening. But I thought, well, well what if they arrest me for saying this? Like I, it was at the point where I was believing in their authoritarian rule set. You know, I was kind of like living by their fucked up authoritarian rules. So I got psyoped. I got psyoped by the Canadian government. It worked. They intimidated me. And um, yeah, it worked for a few months. And then I kind of built up the strength again. And then here we are. I do want to say a big thank you to everyone who has sent me donations. I received a lot during the trucker convoy, which helped pay for a lot of the costs being there. So I really appreciate that. And I have received some since then as well. Um, I am trying to st stay as consistent as possible uh, with uploads, with stuff that's going to drive the conversation forward, get people uh, engaged, get people educated on what's going on, and also entertain people at the same time. That's what I'm seeking to do. So if you do enjoy what I do, then please send a donation. I really, really appreciate it. It goes to a good place. It comes to me and it allows me to focus more of my time and attention on trying to turn this country around. There are a lot of ways you can support me. There's memberships on Facebook. There's memberships on YouTube. There's a Patreon. And there's also a simple donation link below. All of those options do take a little percentage of the money that you send in. So if you want to support me directly as well, you can always send an e-transfer to one of these emails. It's direct deposit. And that way you can support me without any sort of percentages being taken away come straight to me but thank you for watching hopefully that wasn't uh too sappy for you i thought that you guys deserve to know kind of what happened why i was silent for that time and yeah just kind of wanted to give you some context to uh, where i'm at now there are a lot of plans and things that i want to do in the future and that's another reason why your donations really will really help me uh see that through anyway thanks for watching love you merry christmas and we'll talk to you soon